Hi guys. It's Liesl from Artist Palette. Gotta wait another minute. So we are doing the eye painting today. I have a pencil with you and eraser. Makes it a little bit easier to be able to draw it out before you paint it in. So I'm going to go through my supplies I have. Primary colors, black and white. And you can use premixed colors. You can have premixed um, peaches, browns. So I'll put a little bit of brown on here. We can mix our colors together, but just so you can see, this is a raw umber. You can use any sorts of neutral tones as well. And you can use a yellow ochre. Okay. All right. So here are my pencils. I'm going to put this on the side for now. And then for brushes, um, I would recommend, you know, maybe a large one just to get some basic streaks in here first. And then we're going to be using mostly smaller brushes. This is a medium flat number four. And then this is, these are both of my number two and my number zero detailed brushes. Hey, welcome, Vicky. All right. Let's get started. Okay, so obviously they're different shaped eyes, but for the sake of kind of copying, I'm going to do more what I see here. And um, it's pretty, it's a little bit easier to be able to just start with more of a circle. You can just trace a very large kind of bowl or something like that. And this will, this will capture basically more of the actual eyeball itself, which is including what the lid is cutting off. So hopefully that makes sense. So if I were to trace around this, this would make more of a circular shape, very circular, where this is the entire eyeball and then our eyelid, okay, and this is the crease going around the eyeball, and this is the eyelid that's cutting it off a bit, and same with down here on the lower lid, so if we were really wide-eyed, it'd be very, very much more circular. Okay, so I'm taking up a lot of space here. So I'm just going to make, for the most part, I'm just going to make more of a circle, circle shape. You don't need to press too hard either. It's just for reference. You can erase these lines, paint over it later. And this will give you an idea of where to end pretty much everything. So I can, from here, we can make, and it's kind of like, if you were to really outline it more, it looks like the shape of a lemon as well, or an almond. So I want, from here, I want to make more of an actual eyelid cutting it off. I'm just gonna attach, I'm just gonna see in this corner, 
I'm just going to now bring this up. Okay, it's just this is the top little tear duct. Sorry, this is the bottom tear duct in the bottom corner. I'm going to cut off a little bit of the top part of my circle. Don't go too low because then you look like you have a very tired, sleepy eye that's going to close. <laughs> so we're going to go up just a bit here. And the more lid you want to have, we can adjust that too. Okay, and it's going to come down, come down a bit. So it's not coming too far down. It's not coming down in line with this. It's more up here and just outside a bit. Okay, and then we're going to, again, we're gonna cut this off a little bit down here. So this is going to come more here and connect. It's gonna make a little bit of like a miniature oval shape. See, you could just make like a oval shape down here. So that's what I made. This is the tear duct. If you were to, you can just make an oval Make sure you also that you don't have like this too far away from your eye. You don't want it all the way out nowhere. You want it to be pretty close to your actual circle. So you want it to be very close to that, basically touching it. So if you're like, oh, it's too far away, that's what you do. You erase it and you bring it closer like that. All right. I'm gonna bring this in. And so this, this is kind of dipping in. So I'm just gonna curve this in a little bit. And again, this is not too big. It's just a little bit of a inner part of the eye. And then see how it just kind of dips up and down again. And it's going to just basically kind of cut a little bit more straight across before it starts curving upwards. So it's not just dipping all the way down. It's more straight across. And then swooping up. So now we have our, it looks exactly like a lemon, except for this extra little dip for the tear duct. Eyes are really fun to make. So hopefully this is a little bit informative too. And um, maybe you have your preferred way of making eyes. That's okay. Now, from here, there are other things we need to do to pay attention to. Uh, let's start with something more easy. So we're not gonna just start from here and make the eyelid. You could, but um, some of us go out a little bit, they're just a little bit up more, starts a little bit further away, and it can just you know come up and connect with the top part of that circle. Okay, and it just kind of, it can either connect down here, you know, it can stop at a certain point. And also it's kind of shapey in a way that it's not just a perfect continuous line. Sometimes it's got a little bit more of like a, this lid can sometimes be a bit more flat or someone can have a bit more of a, um, like multiple layers of skin on the lid. So I'm just bringing this down a little bit closer to the end, but not quite to the end. Um, you can have it not really touch. I'm just gonna have it a bit further away. Okay, and I just went, brought that in. So from the distance here, sometimes people go too close and then you don't even notice it after you do the lashes, after you do your eyelashes. Um, and then you're going, oh gosh, I should have went further out. Yes. Sometimes you just have to, you want to go a little bit further. So when you're, when you're doing this, with this part of your eye, you want to imagine when you're curling up your lashes, they, they do go generally above your lid, but you're not just doing so many that you don't see this anymore. All right, 
And, you know, sometimes you can just add a couple little extra lines to make it look like there's more of a lid with some extra pieces of crease skin collecting the other. Anyways, that's up to you. Okay, so that part, generally easy. When you're doing this, think of it as being a little bit thicker, especially if you want to make it look like this person's wearing eye makeup slightly. You can, you're going to make this a bit thicker. You can go a little bit lower down or a little bit higher so that it has a bit of a liner or more of a fuller lash, lash line. So you can do, you can just fill, you can make this a little bit thicker. So you're like, okay, I want to make this thicker so that it looks like it's more um, girly, <laughs> makeup looking. Okay, so let's go to the bottom where it's a bit, kind of a little bit more complicated in a sense that you have, so from your tear duct, you have, you know, your water line. So your bottom lashes are not attached to the very bottom line of your eye. And you'll notice in the mirror, and you've probably noticed it already, um, there, there's a little bit of a gap. See, that's your water line. We all know that we have that. We just have to make sure that we're putting it in. So that means this line here, I don't like it to be so dark. It's not really something I want to be too dark of, but it's good to have for reference. So you have your top line of where your eye is going to, the lid of it is just closing. And then below that, I'm just going to erase a little bit. Okay, so like, at the at the bottom here, I like to very lightly. I'm going to press a bit harder. It's almost like you have, if you look at the inner part of your eye, it it's very highlighted. It's very it's a little bit lighter overall. It's kind of sticking out a little bit. You have you can follow this little gap. So it's coming a little bit close here, and then it's coming out, just following parallel to the entire thing basically, and it's not. Uh, necessarily connecting and attaching up here. It's just a little bit further away. Um, you can connect it. You can look in the mirror and look at your own eye and see what you, what makes sense to you. You can just have it a little bit, I just put an extra little line here and have it stick out for reference. So that's the tear duct just underneath here. This line doesn't have to be pressed so hard. It's just a little bit of a following it around. It just kind of wraps around a little bit and then goes underneath. Again, has a little bit of a gap. We're not leaving a super thin line. You don't want a super thin line. You have to make it in proportion to the eye itself whatever that may mean to you. And at the bottom, see how I have that extra bit of circle. I don't know if you've noticed. There's a little bit of my extra circle at the bottom. You know, underneath, that can be, that would be like, um, if you feel you underneath your actual eye, underneath the tear duct before where it's your lashes are, you can feel the rest of your eye. That's that, the eyeball. That would be kind of like where your crease, a little bit of a crease is, if you have a bit of a crease, or uh, maybe just that extra shadowing, right? So you can just still have a little bit of a crease left here. I just want to erase this. So that's like the lower part. That's for later. It's not going to just be a bunch of lines sitting like that, but you can tell, this is where the rest of your eye is kind of sitting, that you can just shadow a little bit like I've done here. It just gives it more of that circular look. <laughs> oh, sometimes the comments are funny. Okay, so yeah, depending on your eye. I mean, like you don't, you don't need to do as much detail as long as you put a little bit of 
some shadowing and stuff. Like I put a little bit of some of the, the wrinkles here, which is pretty normal to have all that there. All right. Now, if you're putting in and you have space, your brow, think about the space between where your brow starts and when it goes up generally, where your the center of your eye is, it's not, it doesn't start going down right like right in the middle. It goes up and it arches over to the corner, the top corner of your eye. And then it comes down a little bit, but doesn't come straight down, right? It kind of, depending on your brow, it can go up. It can just stay up there. It can just stay more straight across, or it can come down just slightly. So your brow can be quite close to where this is right here, all right? And I just kind of scribble that in. And I like to just flick it and go, it goes generally away towards the back of your eye. It just flows like grass, that's what I'm gonna call it. it. Kind of flows like grass. So we're not going to keep it too close here unless you have really bushy eyebrows and you, you want to make them more bushy. But if you're, if you've been trimming them a little bit, you probably did something like this. A little bit of a gap where your upper brow is and your eyelid is up here. And then if you have the space, right? If you have the space for it, you can have it, the, it comes down a little bit or straight across here. You can see a little bit on the sides. Okay, let's do the inner part of the eye. We're not drawing lashes. Don't even, no, don't even bother. It's just going to, when you paint, you can't paint around lashes and don't even try that. We're gonna paint them on top, but we have to do the inner part. So the iris right here, we're gonna do that. We're gonna do the iris and see how this inner part here, it's really shadowed because high kind of stops around here. So it's really shadowed where this is all connecting. It's like all your nerves and everything connecting here. So you can have this a little bit more from this tear duct, a little bit more of a very obtuse angle, very rounded. And this would all be shadowed and filled in. Okay, and even at the back, I think the back of the, the circle here. So if you're finding there's a huge gap at the back, just make your eye smaller, right? Because you have to, eventually there's a bunch of nerves here. It's going to be more shadowed before it starts to close. We have that now we're going to do the iris uh, maybe if you want to trace something you can trace if you have something that happens to be perfect nope we're just going to go for it okay so around here depending on how you want this eye to look to avoid a lot of interesting things like cross-eyed look um goofy eyed look where it looks like you're kind of looking up in the top corner or looking somewhere strange try to keep it more centered Unless you have other plants, make it look like it's looking somewhere else. It's going to be more centered in here. Notice how it's barely almost just touching the bottom. It's like just about there. There's not a huge gap. If you put a huge gap at the bottom, then it will just look like the angle is very off. It's not looking more straight at you. Okay. And it's also taking up a lot of space. So we don't have like this itty bitty eye in the middle. We have lots of space. So you want to imagine also the top part of your iris is actually up here. It's being cut off by your lid. So you're going to go a little tiny bit above, okay? nothing crazy. Then it looks like you're looking upwards and your, your eyes are disappearing in the back of your head. So we're going to 
Just try to get really close to the bottom. There we go, it's kind of, yep, that's a circle. Basically just about to touch the bottom. All right. Now our pupil. So this one is more just like touching the top part of the lid because your eye, it's just optimal that way. Um, you don't want your pupil covering, being covered by your lid. That means that you're, you want it to more be hitting into the light. So you want it to be a bit more into the open area. And this is also taking a fair bit of space, but we're going to, it's, we're going to make it more interesting. We're not going to just do a circle and call it a day. The more dilated, of course, it, it can be bigger. It can be smaller. If you make it more tiny, it means there's a lot of light just shining on the eye. Okay, so kind of centered again, but just a little bit, pretty much centered, but just right about here is good. All right, are we feeling good about painting this in? I think we should do it. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so this is gonna be the bottom of the eye. Some creases later, some more shadowing. I have extra space here because I didn't use a square canvas, right? It would be cut off right around here. And we can start some painting. Just make sure you take your step back and you're happy with what you have. Right? So it's all flowing nicely. I'm going to start with, I can start with this one, just get a base coat, some sort of peachish color or whatever skin tone that you are going to do. A little touch of water. Okay. Let's start with a bunch of white. Not all of this white, but a bunch. <laughs> so big scoop of white. Then I'm taking a little dot of yellow. Maybe a couple dots of yellow, but nothing, nothing extreme because I don't want my skin to look yellow. And then we're going to balance it out with just like a dot or two of red. It's gonna get kind of pinkish. You can add a touch of yellow ochre in here, but it, again, it makes it look very golden yellow. The yellow ochre is pretty close to a yellow brown. If you're using more brown tones, you can add little dots of brown in here as well. But you have to be careful because you don't want it to look gray. You don't want it to look gray. You don't want to put a bunch of brown and go, that's kind of grayish looking. See how it's, it's still very light, right? Because you can always make it darker. You can always add a bit more yellow and red. You can always add in, like say a dot of blue, the tiniest dot of blue, until you're happy with more of the deeper skin tone that you have. Let's just see how it looks. Yep, that's super bright. Plus, it's very safe to use this because you can always go darker and you can always change it. I am painting right up onto my lines because I don't want to see like really thick lines here. I can still see a bit of it, and I know you can too, probably. 
I'm going to add just a touch of my yellow ochre here, which is again, a little bit more of your yellow and a couple dots of your red. Starts looking a bit orangey, more of like a pinkish orangey color because orange would be orange. Okay, you can, that's like more of, that's very porcelain. And then you can add little hints of say blue, start getting it a bit more browned or just go ahead and add some brown. Make your life a lot easier. You have to balance brown out with some yellow and red if it's really gray. A little bit more orange color instead of too much black. So I wouldn't recommend just taking black and adding it in. It tends to like I was saying, it tends to look super gray. You want the warmth with the orange. Which yellow ochre is a good color for. It's a bit more tanned. Okay, you can add a touch of red if it's a bit too yellow, right? Okay, so this I'll just play around with. And it's, you know, if, you, if you're going a bit darker you can put that wherever, but you have to go a little bit darker with the crease. So see, I'm going above my crease here, because that's usually where it's a bit more shadowed. Or you can have it so that, you know, it looks like you're wearing some eyeshadow. That's another fun thing to do. Streaks there. And I'm going to also put some, I'm just following the flow of the face. I'm just gonna put some away from my tear duct because it's actually much brighter where the tear duct is and kind of flow it back. You can do shorter lines, you can do more impressionist style, whatever works. If you take a bit more white on your paintbrush, see you can just above, you're just gonna blend upwards. I like to just take a little bit of white didn't wash it off, go right into my brow because you're going to paint on the actual eyebrows itself, but you want your undertone of the skin color underneath it. That would be helpful. You're just blending it as if you were blending makeup. For those who blend makeup, this is probably making a lot more sense, <laughs> probably easier to understand. So again, around the crease, I am going to go darker. Yellow ochre, you can even just take some browns. But again, you can just take a little scoop of each color, yellow and red. A couple dots of blue. You need to make sure that the blue is not turning it purple or green. So you have to add a bit more yellow and red and it will get more brown. So you want it to be more orange heavy and very little of the blue. Don't just add black. Black is, um, that's a dangerous color. It starts making things way too gray instead of the brown. Okay, so I'm just streaking that right through here, right on the line, even into the crease a little bit. A little bit under here. You can always add more later when you feel like you have more of a sense for it and you can, you're happy to put it in, but um, you can't really, after your lashes, you can't really adjust. So before you do lashes, make sure that you're pretty good and happy with what we have going on. Okay, so I want, let's just um, go back and let's put some bright colors down. Fill this in, some, I just usually add white on my brush just to make it a bit lighter. 
in some other spots here. In this crease, you can just do the same thing or if whatever, if you're using peach before, something lighter, you can use something darker, see, yellow and a little bit of red. You can get more of a creamy color if you want and just put that in between. So I'm gonna cut off the top part of the eye because we're not gonna see that. I'm going right on top of the lines. We are not going above lines. We want to, and look at that. Even when with my pencil mark, it already looks like there's some liner there. Okay, so little streaks, use the thin side just to get it mixed a little bit more. Okay, one thing with the eye itself, we're not gonna just leave it white or just paint it white and call it a day on that. It does have shadowing. So you wanna shadow it now before you start painting the iris. You wanna to try to get most of this filled in, even the tear duct, all of this filled in within. And then once you're done with that, then you can start painting this iris in the pupil on top. So yes, it is white for the most part, but you can use a little bit of your, your peach or some of your skin tone that you've been using a little bit in the corners because it's like it's reflecting a little bit of the color. Also, it's nice, kind of nice to see that. I'm gonna to switch to a little bit of a smaller brush now. Actually, let's just use this one, sure. You can use brown if you want to use more of a brown shadow, you can use gray instead. Don't feel like you have to do one specific color. This is art, right? Even though we're doing more of a realistic eye, we're still having fun and we're still doing it the color scheme that we prefer. So white and a, just a touch of black. So you, you have to be careful. It's not just a whole bunch of dark gray. So when I just lightly go over this, see I can go into the circle a little bit, it's okay. I can just go a little bit in there. And we're just going to shadow that right in the corners, right in the corner. You don't need to follow it all along. Um, just go and shape around this into those corners here. Follow it around just a little bit there. Follow it up a bit and then almost wrapping it around, but not quite. So we have each corner. I'm going to wash this off. And to blend it out, and just remember you can pause this, right? So you don't need to try to keep up if this is too fast. You take white and you're just making, you're just making sure that's staying a little bit circular overall. It's looking like a sphere. You just kind of blend that out. So it looks like it's just a bit more blended. Picks up some of that gray and it's more darker in the corners and then in the area closest to the eye right here in the open, it's hitting more of the light. Okay, so most of your white would be right here in this open area. And then the top and the bottom and towards the corner is a bit darker. It's get a little bit darker. One more time, take some of your darker gray. And you're just going, you can just go over it again if you need to. Just very lightly brush so that you're keeping the corners and the top and bottom a bit darker, more shadowed. It looks more like a sphere. Looks more 3D. And it's just a bit more shadowed along there. So I use more gray for this part and, and here I actually use a bit more of a brown color. Whatever you prefer. Maybe later I'll add some more brown in there for fun or you know after I can always touch up on the shadowing if I need to. 
can always enhance the darkness too. Okay, so I just wash that off. And in just a minute, I'm going to roughly fill this in. It's a little bit of back and forth. It's nothing crazy. You just want to make it look like it's kind of, you know, wet. It looks like it's a tear duct. It looks like there's some water collected there. It's a little bit um, not too runny because then it looks like the person's crying, but just very reflective with some uh, th that watery stuff that we have in the corner. And um, it is a little bit watery. It's very kind of wet around here too, but we'll focus on a little bit there. And as we progress through this, it's going to more and more shape, become the shape of that eye that we've envisioned and we started with the drawing in the beginning. And especially, especially when we put eyelashes, let me tell you how kind of creepy it looks before you put the lashes. It's one of those things, like once you kind of complete your eye, then you start going, yes, this is an actual eye. For that, you're, you might be second guessing it, it's okay. All right, so let's start with that inner part of the eye, the water, the tear duct. Um, you can use more of a darker brown color. You can use same, just more of a darker gray. I'm gonna use more of a darker brown. I'm going to use my number two brush or four, I think it's number two, a little bit of water. Okay. So if you have a premixed brown that you'd rather just start from, you can just do that. It's really shadowed, so this is going to be a bit of a difference. So I'm just going to wrap this around. I'm going to stay kind of within the line. So I'm going to touch the line and stay within it. I'm not going to just start pressing outwards. So here's the thing. You can just follow this up gently right on the line. And that inner part that I was talking about where you have this oval shape here, go ahead and outline that, but you have, see this, these shadows. I like to just kind of quickly add in a few little streaks, mimicking the shape of the eye. And I can just add a few streaks back here, just very lightly right on the line. You don't need to do a whole outline. You can do very light while it's still a tiny bit wet, just along the top, even though we're going to fill in this later, but just keeping it more consistent. And someone's saying, very few people don't have eyelashes. Yes, this is very true. Um, when you're painting it, it's hard to capture that image because it's more detailed without the lashes. Okay, so one of the next things that I'm going to do Take a little bit, so you want to just keep using your 
whatever skin tones that you have, right? So whatever neutral tones that you have, ranging from the brown to a lighter porcelain, right? That should capture everything. You're just going to add in some streaks in here. I like to kind of blob in a little bit. And you can also look at the inner part of your eye and just be like, oh, what a mess. It's got a lot going on. Right, because there's a lot of reflective light. So there's also, to make it look like it's a bit more watery, that's just a bunch of white in there. And you can just add a couple of your, that skin tone color just reflecting into just around where your gray was if you put gray. Or if you already did brown, gray, just leave it. And I'm just going to, for the most part, it is a bit, I'm just going to actually really get this filled in and down here, dark in the very crease. Okay, this is my dark brown again, just dark down in the very crease here before it, as it comes out of the tear duct. Okay, this is like another, this is where the eyeballs kind of rolling back. It's very shadowed. So just a couple little creases in here. And then some little lines of some white or some very light brownish tone a bit in there. So I don't want it to go all the way up like that. That's It looks like there's a bunch of, this can sort of start looking like there's uh, maybe some skin. So I want to keep it dark there. I'm actually going to go back to this brush really quickly and take some darker browns. All right, so you're just, um, to make, if you need to have brown in a jiffy and you don't have pre brown, equal parts red and yellow. A little less than a piece size of blue. See how it starts turning kind of some greenish, maybe even purple color. To purple, you add more yellow. When it's too green, you add more red, right? And you'll find your happy medium. Hopefully you don't just take big scoops of each and you go, oh, now it's too yellow, now it's too red. So you just have to find your happy medium. Right? And now you have brown. So this is a red brown, right? And I just need another like scoop of yellow. So this is a nice, warm, but sort of darker brown. I'm just going to wipe off some of the extra paint. And very gently and lightly. You can also use your finger to pull away some paint as well. You can just go just kind of on the top part. And if you want it to actually be more chestnut brown, you just add a bit of black. Then you can add black. Black is okay because chestnut brown, that's how it gets nice and dark. And just a little bit more of an accent here. So I'm going to use a touch of, I'm going to take off a lot of this. First, I'm going to do a bit of an outline, but nothing too serious. I don't want to just do a continuous line. See how it's kind of more um, spaced apart and kind of jagged. You just you can add with very little paint. See how I have very little paint, and I can even just go right on this line to give it more of a an eyeliner, darker makeup type of look. A little bit of water, very little paint. So I've just wiped off a lot of the paint and I'm just kind of taking a bit of water and just dabbing it. And I can just lightly glide. Took literally off all the paint. I can just glide to really shape and accent the, the brown in the, the shadowed crease up here. And that's just a bit more black and you can see it's more dark and shadowed. And you can just add a couple little more down here, getting a bit closer. So 
So whenever in doubt as well, if you're going, oh gosh, I didn't mean to do like too much darkness, just go back and put in some lighter, maybe some peaches to balance it out. Okay. All right. So I'm going to leave that for a sec. And um, I'm showing you very basic colors too. I was playing around at one point. You can skip ahead if you don't want to do this. You can make a bit of like a purpley color. You know, skin tone can be interesting. You can make it more fun too. You can just mix with some of your brown. So you just take a little bit and you have a little bit of red, like a pea size of red, a little dot of blue. You definitely need more red and you get more purple undertone brown, but I'm going to take a little scoop of white. So it's very mauve very soft mauve, not overly purple. We're not making an actual purple. Just wipe off a little extra paint. Just make sure it's more heavy on the red. Too blue, it looks, I mean, you know, it still can look nice, but see how you got, sometimes you can just, and that can be for like your shadow up here too, right? So you can even put purples up here, get a hint of some sort of mauve, um, underneath you have cool colors on your skin here and there from some of the creases and just from the pigmentation sometimes, right? You can do that. Right, so you can just, very little paint, just lightly blend it on. For those who are makeup artists, this is probably, you're going, this is too much paint. You need to wipe some of it off and just lightly blend it on. Okay, so other things you can experiment with is, um, you know, you can just take a bit more. You can just take like, this is, I'm going to bring this down a little bit. I took a bit of red and yellow. I didn't wash off the brush on top of my purple. See, and you can just get more of a soft... Um, salmon looking color just to accent you just kind of put some in through here very light to get some more warm colors and sometimes the color that comes together it can make it look more alive it can make it look more interesting and not just one flat tone right so even though I've added some salmon, in the grand scheme of it, it looks like it's got a bit more color in the face instead of just a flat, like light, light peach or gray. In a little bit, I'll show you too. I can show you some, some green color very shortly. Green, um, you gotta be careful with green because sometimes it can make people look very washed out. But it's nice to add because we have some pigmentation in our skin. Okay, I'm washing this off. And you can change things. We, we're not quite done. We're going to bring it more alive. We're going to focus on the color in here. And whatever color that may be, I'm going to let you just pick your color. We know how to make brown. So if you're doing a brown eye, you're just going to follow the same color scheme. Something more orangey. Um, sometimes you have a bit of gold in your eye. You can put more yellow. If you happen to have a yellow ochre, you can just put in some hints of yellow ochre. You can make, you can look at your eye, take a picture of it, and just look at all the different colors that are sitting in there. Um, I tend to make a lot of kind of olive greenish sort of eyes because that happens to be my color, just a more of a grayish green. So I'm just going to do that. And for anybody who's interested, it's also a very, it's not, um, it's a very unusual color just because it's uh, more complicated to mix. If you're doing a blue eye. There you go. It's pretty much mostly blue, but it's got a bit of gray always. We don't, not very many people, some people do, have just straight up light aqua blue, right? And I'm going to take white and I'm going to take a little touch of my brown. So if you have some extra brown on the side, just add it in. Surprisingly, 
if you have um, like a hazel greenish eye that's got like an olive green, it's actually got brown in there. And with a hint of some pigmentation of blue and yellow until you're happy with how green it looks. See, that was brown and green on top. This is more, this is getting, this is more of a olive color. It's very light pastel, but let's just start with that because it's nice to see how it's looking. I would use your small brush to shape around. I'm just going to get this really quickly sort of filled in. I'm going to go right up into this inner circle. I'm just going to go within. I'm not going to go outside the line. I'm going to stay within. So don't try to make it all one consistent color. It's not going to be a consistent color. You can sometimes go a bit more yellowy. You can go a bit more blue. I'm going to shape around. Be very careful. Try not to go outside the lines. So once you have that, then what I do is I just pull from that line into the boards the middle. That's the easiest way to do it. You just pull in. And you're just going to go around like a clock. Just going to keep the angle. You're going to try and keep all your lines straight, which means you're not doing any weird squiggly lines. They're all pretty straight, like a, a star bursting. Just looking at the comments. So there's the green. So it doesn't just end there. It's hard to layer color on top of wet paint, but I find this kind of the most fun step because you can just tweak it to however you want. I'm going to add in some darker olive green, blue, yellow, more brown, no more white. So you want to get darker. Again, more yellow and blue. Keep it kind of dark. So from here, yes, I'm going to stay within the lines here. You'll also notice that the actual outline of your iris is quite dark. It's almost black. You do want it quite dark. It's got like a ring, you know, you can see a bit of a ring going around. It's darker, even if your eye is really light. So I'm just going to, especially at the top where it's shadowed, I am going to add a bit more of this into the shadowed part where you don't see as much of the color at the top. You know, just pulling it from the out in. These short little lines, sometimes longer. Just try to keep them all following around like a clock consistent. Just very carefully trying to go around here.
I'm just kind of pull it out and pull it in. Maybe a little bit more. Okay, so I can always go around and shape the eye and clean up any lines that I need to afterwards. I won't let it bug me too much right now, even especially while it's wet. Okay, so one thing before we, you can add more color, but I'm going to take some white. So the same brush, and I'm just going to streak in some white. Get some reflective color in here. So it's just like some lights hitting certain spots, and it's very light reflecting. Try not to over work it right now, it will just blend back in. Sometimes they can be outside. Sometimes you get in your eye, you can see little speckles of different color or light, lighter parts. Okay, so what's really, it's going to help when you take black. So if I take black, put in the circle. So I just fill this in really quick. And then for the most part, what happens is I have it filled in. Can't just leave it like that. It's got streaks coming out. Very short ones, I'm just feathering it around. You might have to do two coats because it might be pulling some of your color. It's okay, it's gonna be a bit awkward at first. And I actually just take in some of this. Sometimes you can just pull in some of the darkness on the edges. So sometimes down here, I have little short lines coming from the edge inwards. Just experiment with it. There's usually a little bit of this on the very edges. Um, you can also, on the very edges, you can add a bit more brownish color or some deeper color of your eye color that you've been putting in. So if you, usually green has a bit more of a brownish, or if you're using blue, you can use more of like a blue-gray, darker blue-gray. Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna fix the shape of this eye, the iris, when it's a bit more dry, just to clean it up. However, wash that off for a minute. Has to dry because it's really hard to put a second coat, to change, um, when it's still wet, you start just mixing and merging colors together. Let's start focusing on, on the eyelid up here. So like where our, um, where the lashes are gonna be coming out of. So right around here, and we're going to work on the lashes. You can, you're probably gonna to wanna to practice before doing this. 
a couple of things may happen. Um, if you're not used to it, you might realize that you went way too long or way too short. The good news is it's not going down here. So if you're happy with what's up here, now you can focus on it. If you're not, don't do it yet because you can't go around it. So you want to, if you have some green, I, I said I would show you with some very, very light, faint green. So mostly white with like a hint of green that I used a bit of brown on top of. So it's the same color as this, except I had more white. So if you wanted to give it a bit of like a greenish um, tinge here and there, you're more than welcome to, keeping in mind that sometimes green can be a little bit much on skin. All right, so that's an option. We still have a brow here. Okay, this is my number two brush. Taking, I'm going to first take dark gray. I'm not gonna just take a bunch of black and go for it. I'm gonna take a dark gray, so black with a little bit of white. We don't need to use straight black until we need straight black. So start off lighter. You can also use just a dark brown. All right, so this line I am going to press harder now. Okay, this is coming in. Going pretty much to the corner. So I pressed harder. And this is this is going to help make it look like it's more shadowed, like right along the top here. Practice on something else. Just trust me, if you haven't really done this before, um, it's probably going to make it feel a little bit easier if you practice. Water and paint, water and paint. Always, always, always. And that's just how I do it. And if you don't reload your brush with paint and water, you're going to get this, like, inconsistent line that's going to drive you nuts. Okay. So if you look carefully, see how the lashes are just, they're, they're always curled. They're never just straight lines. They're curled, flicking up, curled, flicking up. So they're wrapping and flicking up, wrapping, flicking up. And then in the middle, they're kind of going a little bit in both directions, sometimes straight up, right? We have some of those lashes doing that. And then they're switching about halfway across, see, from straight up to both directions to now that side, and they're flicking up this way. So the inner part, this one's going towards and flicking up towards the right, okay? More in the middle, sometimes on each side, and then gradually more towards the left. Here we go. Inner part of the eye, smaller ones. So we're not going to quite go out here. We're going to stay closer. See, just like little, little flicks. See, just kind of curling and flicking out. Sometimes shorter ones, sometimes longer ones. You can start off shorter and then just go over top and make some longer ones. I gotta turn it this way to help me a bit more. See how they're going above my lid now? And they're going to go on sometimes they're kind of bunched a little bit. They don't have to just be all perfect. I just realized how, I'm looking at this now, I realized how angled I went with my eye on this one than the other one. Okay, 
So more straight up, but still curved. And now see, I'm just gonna wrap it. See how they're like, they're just bending down below a bit of the eye. Whoops, it's okay. And off to the side here, water and paint. And try not to overdo it. See how, so this is just a little bit more conservative right now. Now I can add in some layers of just black right on top. And you can add some more um, longer ones. And just shorter ones in general it fills up some of the space especially if you want it to be more filled like you're wearing a bit more makeup filling in kind of like mascara gives it more of a filled look or eyeliner on top it just fills in some of the space Yep, hopefully it's making it pop out a bit more. So sometimes you just need a little bit of extensions. If you're thinking eh, it's a little short, it's okay. Just a little bit of like an extension, just add a few more. line here this is a little bit of a lash kind of dipping down a little bit more um, totally happens we all know what happens when you have a lash curling down in front of your eye a bit but that's okay this one I went a bit more um, <laughs> a little bit more I would say looking like this person's wearing makeup but I'm just feeling that today I guess So little things, um, any trim ups you need to do, this is just white, any little awkward spots to make your iris look a little bit more circular, less, it's hard to make a perfect circle. So when I first made this, obviously I spent more time trying to make a perfect circle. Um, so I encourage you to do the same, but I'm not gonna be quite as picky today, even though it's nice to Sometimes it drives you nuts, right? It's so little. We'll make the outer part of the iris a little bit darker and touch up on some color, the black coming from the center too. <laughs> yes, <laughs> so far, so far. Okay, so one of the next things that we can work on here, bottom part, 
you can take your some white with a little bit of your whatever skin tone or some a little bit of brown, right? Some tanned color. That uh, the waterline. I'm just adding a little bit of color. So this is like a just a light color. We're not I'm not going to put too much in just because I, unless you want makeup in the waterline, right? So mostly white with a touch of the color of your peach or whatever skin tone, just a touch of it. So it's only like mostly white. Or you can be fancy and use different sort of colors. You can do some some greens, like the light soft green or purple. I know it's hard to tell. I know it's very hard to tell because we haven't added lashes yet. It will start to come together and pop out more. And someone's, I think someone is right. This eye is starting to look a little bit younger than the one I originally made. And once you're done and happy with, you know, what's coming down here, it kind of looks like you have a bit of like that, a little bit of like a soft wrinkle. Um, you can put a little bit more in if you want it to be a bit, a bit more creased. Totally up to you what you're comfortable with here. I went a little bit more harsher with some of the creases too. Then you can start adding in your, your lashes. So same brush, maybe start with like a light, or it's not light gray, but a, like a darker gray or brown. And before you use straight black, if you're using any, I would use a little bit of a lighter one so that it's not coming off too, overall, when you're looking at your bottom lashes, they're not just straight black, right? They don't just, they're very, they're much smaller. They're not as noticeable unless you're putting on heavier makeup at the bottom. So they're really just, they're not touching, they're not inside the waterline, they're actually just right outside. And it's following the same rule, okay? So we're just going to, right outside, it's going down and away. This side, it's going and flicking down towards the other side. I'm gonna go a touch lighter. And sometimes they're a bit more straggly. <laughs> they're not as perfectly placed. They're kind of more thin and far and few between. Sometimes they cross over. They're not, it's just this more of a realistic kind of look. See how these are really tiny? They would fall naturally a little bit longer. So let's go a bit longer. Don't need to be as afraid. Just make sure they're nice and curled down because they're following the groove and the curve of the face, the eye. Sometimes just little ones. These ones, very much smaller, right? And you can always add more. Sometimes this is, this is all some people have and you can have a little bit more. You can put on a little bit more heavier makeup on some of them, meaning um, the ones that you do have, they're just standing a little bit darker. So you can start using black and darker brown or just add more in general. I think that's good enough for me. I don't need to go as heavy. Um, I did go heavier on the other one. I did it a little bit darker, like there's a bit more thicker mascara on it. Okay, 
I'm just going to take a couple seconds here. And hopefully we're appreciating some of the shadowing we've done in the eye. If you need to touch it up gently, you just add a little bit more of your darker brown or gray. And you can put a little bit more, especially from the top here. I personally like to take a bit of a darker gray and just darken some of the top part of the eye, even into the iris because it is shadowed. This is my this is my green, so blue, a bit of yellow, so a bit of yellow and blue and some brown. Give it a darker green, like a hazily green, and I just darken up the top. To give it that extra shadowed look. I am going to take a little bit of white and put in a little dot here, a little bit, another one in here, and just kind of very lightly just in the corner, you can make it a bit more watery looking. However, if it looks a little bit too light, just go back with some dark brown, some darker skin tone color to give it more of that darker shadow. Okay, so I'll just a little recap before we move on. What's key a little bit for the eye is this ring around here. It's not just straight white. It is a very light version. It's white with a touch of your skin tone. Just is from right in here. Usually it's lighter a little bit here, even if you've been using different colors. And it's just wrapping around a little bit into your waterline. And then below, we have a little bit more of our skin tone color into some darker, soft streaks shaping around the eye. See, it's going from in, swooping in, and then coming out a little bit for a bit of a poof for the shape and um, wrapping around the rest of the eyeball that you can even feel under your own eye. It's not too far down, but it's still, it's still going with the groove of the eye and how it's, the skin is flowing. Um, all right, so we're getting there. We're almost there. We have more touch-ups to do in here to finalize this. Uh, the brow, if you have space for it. And that should, and any other touch-ups you want to do, right? So first of all, this is my tiniest brush. I do want to get more of a solid line around the iris, okay? Water, so water paint, water paint. I need to use a dark, either brown, you can use black, or a dark gray. You can even use your color eye with a bit of black and go from there. So I'm just going to stay within the lines as best as I can. There really is this little kind of ring going around, so it's kind of important. Tedious, but worth it. Okay. 
more water and paint. And you can even just, as you're going around, and afterwards pull in some color in from here, just short little lines, even in through the middle, gives it extra color and more depth into the eye. The more our eye is very complicated, it's got a lot going on. Take a look at it. Okay, more streaks. That's kind of fun. So I have a bunch of streaks and stop whenever <laughs> it's hard to stop. It's hard to know when to really stop. Um, but it is important to add in some lighter color. You don't have to do straight white. You can just do white with a little touch of your eye color that you've made. Or you can add a bit of gold in there if you have more of a yellowy speckles in your eye. That seems to be kind of common for some people, especially if you have hazel brown. You got little hints of yellowy gold in some spots. So I'm mostly going to hit more of the lighter color towards the bottom here. So again, if you're just making it more gold, if you have gold, great, go for it, add it in. Um, but you can just add a bit more yellow into your brown and more white. That makes it more of a gold looking color. Um, you can also use yellow ochre. It looks very gold. I'm just going to add in some more. I'm just taking some white here just to see how I feel about that. Yes, definitely give it a try if you're just kind of watching and thinking about it. Something fun to do. Okay, I might just, I have to stop. I have to stop adding color because you can add so much color in. I'm going to put in black now. You don't need to use your smallest br uh, brush for the black. You can actually use your, your bigger number two. So this one, you just want to have it super dark, of course, before and the reflective light that's shining on the top of the eye. That, of course, when it's dry, you add it in and you can even be more fancy and reflect your eyelashes into that because <laughs> it would reflect your eyelashes. It's a thing. 
So I'm just putting in some streaks and start bursting it out, making sure it's pretty solid black. And remember, the more, uh, the bigger the, like the pupil is, the more you put kind of star bursting out, the more it looks like there's less light going into the eye. So it's, um, it's not really anything that you need to worry too much about. It's whatever you prefer to do. Of course, more color of the eye that's showing, the nicer because you can see more of your eye color. Just touching up on my lashes there. That's it. Okay, washing this off. So while that's drying, I'm going to put in some of the eyebrow and then we can do the reflective spot. And of course, as much tweaking as you like, because you're gonna, you're gonna take your step back and see if you need to add more, say a little bit of like your reflective skin tone, maybe just along the edges. It also gives a nice extra boost of shadow you can use more of a darker brown or dark gray. Um, if you're feeling even more fancy, you actually have a lot of veins coming from the edge. So you can very lightly with your tiniest, tiniest brush have little squiggly lines. Look at your own eye and see what I mean. Coming in from the corners. You don't need to overdo it because then <laughs> when you put too many, that are noticeable, it starts looking like your eye is strained and you're like trying really hard to do something. And I don't know if that's the look you're really going for. Okay, so just very light, squiggly, very feathery, nothing crazy, nothing that's like too obvious. But if you look close enough, you have them. And it's mostly just in the corners coming in a bit before. And if you look underneath your eye, you see a lot more, right? The more the blood veins, the more of the red, red veins. So it's very faint here. I wasn't, um, I'm not trying too hard. I would, I'm actually using the wrong brush. I need to use my small, small brush. Just a little bit closer. You see some of those little veins starting in the corner. Yeah. Okay. Eyebrows. So mine are a nice dark brown and you can use a dark brown or you can use a whatever color your brows are. Sometimes you just have to add in more of a lighter brown. Maybe you're more of a blonde type of person. Or maybe you have something fun and it's not even any of these colors. You can do something else. You can do black. Okay, so true black, it's, it's more of a really, really dark brown. If you're going, I have like black eyebrows. I'm pretty sure it's just a really super dark brown in terms of pigmentation, but you can go for it with black. You say nothing is really truly ever just straight black. It's always got some color in it. Okay, I'm gonna take some sort of medium brown to start. And once you, in, actually the good thing about this is you don't need to freak out if you're like, oh gosh, I don't, I don't like it. I don't, I don't wanna put this there, you can just, Paint over it again. So lots and lots of streaks. Think 
abundance of some sort of grassy type of feel here. Sometimes you have, depending on how clean your brows are just in terms of shape, if you're going for more of a natural look, sometimes, you know, they're coming down a little bit closer and not as trimmed overall. This is very... That's not a lot. I have to keep adding, keep adding, keep adding. See how they're just pulling back in that direction. So I'm going towards the left, water paint. I am going to couple it with, you can add little hints of just straight black because it will pick up the color underneath and you can get accents of some darker color. I wouldn't just use straight black like I was saying. I would avoid using just a whole bunch of black. I would do a super, super dark brown. So black with your brown. And just take your time. Just lots and lots of overlap. And don't force anything just because if you run out of space, you're not going to just add little bits of your brow here unless your brow happens to be touching your eyelashes, then sure. But overall, just put it in a place that it would normally sit. Yes, definitely needs to be thicker. You need to go all the way up here. And I don't think I really see too much over on this side. You can put some slight little lines, very faint. See how it looks, if it makes any sense. Meh. I would just be wary of that. Okay. Um, so if you're doing some some lighter ones, see this like golden color, you can do more of like a blonde that's mostly yellow with your brown. You add yellow, more yellow, and a bit of white to your brown. You can get more of a golden blondish color. Awesome. Yes, hopefully this has been fun and pretty relaxing. You know, I kind of liked without the brows too. Just, anyways. Okay. So after this, yep, we got to do the reflection spot. And feel free to tweak more of the color in your iris. If you need to, you can use a bit of white, straight white, just to get some more in there. This is dry. Okay. I am actually going to start with my flat medium. So you can use a flat brush. It tends to be, um, you know, depending on the reflection of the light that's hitting it. Oh, got some water there. It has to stay more rounded with the eye. You can't just put like a straight line or anything. That would be very off, off putting. I'm gonna take a little bit of white. Now, don't freak out because it, the worst thing that can possibly happen is you don't like it and you just paint this area black again and you touch up on your eye color.
Someone's asking if I paint with both hands. Actually, no, I don't. I wouldn't generally paint with this hand, but let's try it out. Nope, that would just, I would end up having to paint my eye again. Okay, so it's close to the top here. This is where the light happens to be hitting it. I have to be quite careful. Um, I almost don't even want you to use this brush. I'd rather you use something round so you're not using the brush that I just happen to be using. It's just thicker. So I'm just going to curve this around and just very lightly bring this around and just a little bit extra. See how it's curved, but not like too curved. It's going with the, the curve of the eye. And you can go just outside the pupil a little bit. Switching back to the smaller one. Like a rainbow, but a little bit more into the center here. Sometimes you can have like a little dot down off to the side as well. So you can put a little extra circular sort of dot down there. Just touching up on a little bit extra color in the eye before it gets super white because I don't want it all just to be perfectly white. So we have that curve and when it dries, sometimes it dries really, it, it absorbs some of the canvas. It's not as bright with the white. You can just put in more of a second coat, just thicker white paint, thicker layer. If you need it to be a little bit more opaque. And again, with a little bit of white, I like to just add little highlights, little featherings. Throughout the eye here and there, or you can just touch up on the darkness. So it's just a little bit of a touch up on the darkness. Okay. So that should pretty much do it for the most part. Take your step back, look at your eye, see what else you want to add in. Um, you can add a little bit more of a bit of a crease here if you want to. More lashes, more black lashes overall. Be careful not to have to go back to your skin tone over top of your lashes unless you're just painting over it again. But hopefully we're proud of what we made. something fun. And I was showing you that like you can use very mostly white with very soft bits of like say 
salmon, pinkish, purple, even some green to give it a bit more color in the face. Taking, just putting a bit more of that darker brown. So we love seeing results. And you can show us on our Facebook page um, at Artist, Part, Artist Palette Durham. Um, go to groups, and then you can go to the support group. That's there. Show us what, what you've made, your own eye that you've made. Maybe you want to make more eyes, and you're just practicing. Yeah, but thanks for joining. And you can see... I've basically followed the exact same shape and everything. Um, I did a couple different things of showing you different things. You can go a bit more softer. Uh, you can do more color, make it more fun. You can make it look a little bit younger. You can add a bit more creases like I did here. You can do all sorts of things. And the lid, you can do different things with that as well with the shape. Thanks for joining, guys. Hmm. Bye. Oh, and check out what's coming up, and you can see what's already happened, too, previously on our, on our YouTube channel.